गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून सर सो टुडे विल स्टार्ट एम ई जी सिक्स ब्लॉक सेवन विच इज अमेरिकन शॉर्ट स्टोरी देर आर फोर यूनिट अमेरिकन शॉर्ट स्टोरी एंड टू शॉर्ट स्टोरीज है a clean well lighted place by ernest hemingway and the bear by william faulkner and uh, their com comparison and contrast so we have four units together uh, in block 7 of mg6 <clears throat> so we'll start with a short story okay what is a short story and how it became a genre of writing of literature and uh, how it flourished in america and consolidated and uh, what changes it underwent through evolutions and uh, different uh, movements so all these things will cover so two uh, such stories have been prescribed so i'll try <coughs> to cover but i think the time may not Uh, cooperate with us anyhow so starting with short story short story is <clears throat> very old if you talk about uh, the way of talking or the way of uh, telling stories listening to stories it's a very old tradition okay it can be said uh, it is as old as human instinct okay when the human beings got their <clears throat> ability to talk to share uh, with the language uh, to share their thoughts and ideas using language a certain language uh, you can say uh, this uh, system this tradition of telling stories and listening to stories began from that time and uh, you can say as a, a new trend you can say uh, the trend of writing such stories and such story becoming in genre is as new as uh, the human beings craft of writing this is a craft of writing you can say this is an art of writing it developed with certain uh, movements with certain evolutions later in the civilization towards 19th century after novel came into being we know in 18th century europe we find the rise of novel novel as a genre though we find uh, the same elements of novel in different other writings before that age but the term novel and novel as a genre it came in the 18th century before that it was known as prose prose writing people used to say um, uh, the authors used to write prose pieces not novels so novels came in a certain period of time in the history of literature so after that you can locate this uh, genre of writing short stories <clears throat> it may be as old as the adventure tales of odyssey or uh, different tales of uh, bible uh, even if you talk about indian literature uh, mahabharat and even the tales of panchatantra so we have a lot of examples in the very past in the very ancient history of literature we have a lot of stories though in different forms we find uh, the elements of short stories today uh, a genre uh, in uh, in the past history okay but as a genre different distinct genre a very um, uh, separate uh, distinct art as highly organized and deftly executed genre a short kind of narrative emerged in the 19th century this particular this specific distinct art of short story writing short stories became a genre emerged in the 19th century only the rise of novel and novelage you can say novels are different from novelas novelas are uh, shorter in form uh, if you uh, take for example tom jones as a novel you find a very um, bulky uh, 
novel with a lot of pages which um, uh, means at that time most of the novels are uh, printed like this but gradually we find people uh, feeling very uh, bored kind of things they are tired of reading uh, the whole novel for several days even it it may takes months also if you want to read a novel you have you have to devote um, a lot of time okay so with the busy schedule of people in modern time we find them they are unable to complete a novel if it is very bulky very thick so gradually they um, uh, transformed their uh, um, their they, they uh, choose shorter novels which uh, we call novelage okay so again we find that people they they want that uh, when uh, particularly these journals periodicals were printed were published uh, which comes monthly or weekly uh, you must have heard about periodicals which come uh, come out which are, which are published um, with weekly or monthly intervals so at that time people thought of reading a story a whole story a complete story in a single magazine in a single periodical in, in a single issue of the periodical or journal so at that time it encouraged this demand from the people the readers demanded uh, means um, uh, encouraged the writers to write something which can be placed in a journal in a periodical at the same time it can also be read by the readers a complete story in a single um, issue you can say but if you see different novels they were also published in episodes in various episodes in uh, different periodicals uh, for example if you talk about um, our odia stories also many of the poraja you can say um um uh, senapati's uh, chaman and athagunt you can say six acre and a half uh, this uh, milestone in odia literature that was that the, they all were published in the pages of um, periodicals okay uh, it comes episode by episode in different issues so reading one episode and waiting for the uh, rest part of the story to cover in the uh, proceeding in the um, um, next episodes that was very uh, kind of you, you have to wait a lot okay so people they do not have patience they do not have enough time uh, they are busy in, in their own uh, works in their own profession so they uh, demanded everything to be very compact very precise very short so that can be com completed in a single issue and they can read it at a stretch so that is the way webbed by the demand and the necessity of the period that uh, such story became a genre and different authors they uh, focused on writing such stories encyclopedia britannica quotes about the definition of a short story like this such story unfolds some kind of idea through the action and interaction of characters at some distinct time and place so this is the definition by encyclopedia britannica about such story okay such story unfolds some kind of idea through the action and interaction of characters at some distinct place and time time and place so this is the definition you can understand there are different elements also we find in a short story important elements are theme there must be a theme central uh, issue on which the story must be based on plot there must be a plot <coughs> okay characters certain characters and a setting there must be a setting in which uh, everything all the actions of the story will under will be undertaken <clears throat> the major writers in american such story at the beginning very beginning of this uh, genre you can say uh, where um, where washington irving edgar allan poe and nathaniel nathaniel hawthorne you have already read 
author. So these are the important figures in American short story at the very beginning. Okay, they were writing in the first half of 19th century. That is also called the first phase of um, uh, short story in American literature. Edgar Allan Poe, for the first time, formulated a set of principles uh, in order to compose or for the composition of such stories. The rules were like this. First, such story must aim at a uh, predetermined effect. There should be something predetermined. The effects of the story should be predetermined. Okay. <clears throat> the second point is, it must, exclude, um, it must exclude everything which does not contribute to that predetermined effect. The effect that we keep in mind before starting the story, um, the moment we are formulating the plot and other things in our imagination, so we must take care that whatever uh, we are writing or whatever we are, the characters setting everything, that should also that should contribute to the effect we have in mind and the third point is it should uh, be sought but not so sought that the predetermined design cannot be uh, realized the predetermined um, means formulation that we decide before writing uh, that idea should be realized uh, in a uh, story so you have to take care of that without being very much concerned with the length of the story. The story's length, the length of the story should be short, as it is uh, said, short story, but it should not be so short that you have to compromise with your uh, um, previous, the predetermined design. Okay. <clears throat> Several critics found after this uh, set of principles introduced by Poe, Several critics found that uh, these principles are very rigid and restrictive. Okay, so a free writer, author, who is using his imagination, starts writing a story. If focuses on all these aspects of all these principles set by Poe, it becomes very restrictive. You cannot express whatever you think. So um, at a certain uh, <clears throat> time, you are uh, you are away from your actual um, uh, actual uh, thought, actual imagination. So that is why. But it it worked well in in the works of his own by Poe. Okay, in his stories we find he has always uh, um, tried to stick to those elements that he has introduced. Houghton is better known, you know, is a novelist. Uh, he has uh, uh, written a lot of stories, but uh, his stories uh, are uh, not that much um, uh, given. Uh, the stories were not given that much priority the way novels were given. So his novels are very much important and he is named because of uh, his novels as a from a renowned novelist in American literature. Okay, but his stories are also very important. Uh, incorporating epiphany and allegory, even uh, the parables also. Okay, uh, American short story after Poe was more pro prolific, was more um, um, florist, you can say, and impressive. Okay, uh, O. Henry is one of the best who had uh, stories for everyone. So you must have heard about O. Henry, William Sidney Porter, the original name. And O. Henry is a pseudonym, uh, uh, pen name he used to write it. His stories, most of his stories, The Gift of the Magi, uh, The Last Leaf, a lot of stories uh, he has written. And all the stories have a twist, O. Henry twist. You must have heard about that. Stephen Crane. Stephen Crane is also another important figure in the history of short story writing. He introduced and uh, and integrated the features of naturalism and determinism in American short story. He belongs to the uh, belongs to uh, that particular group of story writers, such story writers who not only enriched uh, American such story but also widened the range of the genre. 
this particular genre was widened and this is because of Stephen Crane. So when we talk about renaissance in American short story, in the early decades of 20th century, uh, the most important figures which should be uh, read, which should be looked into, uh, they were uh, Serud Anderson, Henry James, Hamlin Garland. Okay, uh, these are the important uh, writers of uh, Renaissance American story. Okay. Uh, American short story, Renaissance in American short story. That was another phase in which these writers are very important. And among them, Serwood Anderson was the best, was the best of all, surpassing all important writers of uh, even Europe. Okay, uh, and uh, he heralded uh, 20th century Renaissance in American short story. So, okay, if, if you say there was a renaissance in American such story. So it was because of Sarod Anderson. During the second quarter of 20th century, the most widely and most acknowledged voices in American such story were Hemingway and Faulkner. The two such story writers we are going to cover in this uh, block. So Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway and William Faulkner they were two important, uh, the most uh, acknowledged voice, voices, you can say, under the influences of Anderson. Hemingway evolved uh, the principle, you can say the iceberg principles of writing used uh, to tell the understatements and conveyed multiple meanings, largely through symbolical ironic implications. Hemingway was born in 19, uh, 1899. He worked as a driver in, uh, a, in, a, in an ambulance uh, for many years and worked as a reporter also for Toronto. Um, <clears throat> in Toronto, uh, he worked for uh, several years. His themes include the violence at the heart of man, its figuration include not only physical um, physical violence but also psychic violence. It's not about the violence we experience outside; it also includes the violence inside. Okay, not only violence of war but also the violence of every everyday life. It includes the violence of war as well as the violence of everyday life. In everyday life, we also encounter a lot of violences in inside our own mind, inside inside our heart. Okay, so he also talk about uh, the threats of confrontations with violence, but also its consequences. Okay, he not only talk about the threats of confrontations, but also he um talked about violence uh, and its consequences okay so this is briefly about um hemingway so now we'll go for the first story a clean well lighted place it is a very interesting story a kind of existential story in which we find uh, there is there is nothing much that happens in the story Okay, the story is a plotless story, you can say, a plotless story. Um, the actions are very much limited and you can say nothing happens. Okay, is the story uh, based on nothingness, you will find at the end of the story, the story is based on nothingness to establish that the author also uh, wrote nothing or very less, you can say, in the story. The story you can uh, say in a single line also. Okay, um, we'll go to that um, uh, summary part later. So this story was included in his collection. Winner uh, take nothing. So this is the collection of his short stories by Ernest Hemingway, published in 1933. And uh, in this collection, we found this a clean, well-lighted place. Uh, got published. 
okay and the story is set in a cafe so i am giving a very brief summary actually there is nothing much happened in the story also the story is set in a cafe in the late night it's very late in the night and the setting is a cafe okay an old man and a deaf you can say a deaf and old man as a customer comes to that cafe and through the discussions later on we found that this old man had tried to had attempted suicide out of despair okay this old man came to the cafe in 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 the very late night there were two waiters only in the cafe one waiter is uh, an older waiter you can say another waiter is younger okay two waiters are there one older and one younger okay so these two waiters they talk about the old man uh, for the time being uh, for the time the old man sits in the cafe when the old man uh, goes to his home uh, the uh, younger waiter he goes to his own house also and the older waiter Uh, he reflects for some time and the story ends okay so between uh, that time means the old man uh, the the time the old man spent in that cafe during that these two waiters they uh, shared certain view views certain points about the old man they know and from that only we uh, get the essence of the story and we'll discuss that okay the theme of means this old man has a lot of money you must know that this old man has a lot of money a very big house with all kind of luxury okay he has everything to enjoy but he has come to the cafe at the midnight you can say in the very late night the older waiter insists the younger waiter to stay up to 3 am okay but the younger waiter always Uh, insist that uh, bars are all, bars are there so those who will come to the cafe they must go to the bars so we have to close and i have a wife i have my family so i have to go go to my home so the younger waiter is very eager to go to uh, his home and enjoy his life with his wife okay and the older waiter is not that much eager to go to home okay. he wants to stay in the cafe to keep it open uh, and let others like the old man who needs the cafe during the late night he should uh, welcome them and uh, serve them so that is the story all about i uh, means the summary nothing happens i said at the beginning <coughs> that nothing much happens in the story but you come to if you come to the discussion part you will find this is a very beautiful story a very um, means a story which uh, encourage you to discuss a lot means 2 3 hours will be insufficient if we start discussing the story in the proper way so i will try to give best of best of the discussions whatever is possible within this time frame the theme of nothingness is the center of the story thing of nothingness okay i said initially this is an existential story okay if you talk about absurdism existentialism that came in the later part of um, second world war after the second world war yeah. out of the devastation out of the loss the kind of uh, fear the kind of uh, um loss that 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 everybody experienced the cruelty the actual reality the evil heart of the human beings okay everything was clearly seen after the second world war you, you must have seen you must have read certain novels certain stories about the aftermath of um, the second world war it was very devastating okay the nuclear bomb and the radiation the kind of rape loot 
the kind of uh, uh, killing mass killing attack so all these things will leave you in a position that you will be uh, in a you will be in no uh, mood to say anything you cannot say anything after that you will remain speechless so then only we find these concepts of absurdism absurd play absurdism is um, we we assign this particular term to the uh, drama particularly uh, to the theater so that is why we do not use this term here absurd story we say it is an existential story so existentialism also rose up after that so existentialism uh, in brief uh, we do not have much time to discuss uh, existentialism is something where we find uh, it is just the opposite of essentialism essentialism says in simple terms you can understand that when you are born you are imposed with certain essences essence means rules and regulations in simple terms when you are born you are supposed to obey such a certain rules you cannot uh, disobey that okay suppose as a uh, uh, as a small boy when uh, a small girl when you are born you you know how to speak so you have to uh, say Uh, using certain words in hindi suppose you have to say a tum aap you have uh, people will say you have to say aap to these kind of people you cannot say aap to your uh, younger uh, sister or uh, your friends uh, so why this this is a kind of tradition you cannot wear uh, once you are born on the day of your birth you are given a particular dress you cannot wear if you are a girl a girl baby is born you cannot um, um uh, assign a boy's dress to that girl you cannot um uh, wear a boy's dress to that girl because the dress has been already in the essence the essence says that you have to wear a girl's dress a girl's dress is different okay a girl has to uh, speak differently wear differently walk differently okay as a uh, human being if your mother uh, dies or your father dies you have to cry you have to mourn for the death anybody who dies if you love somebody you have to reciprocate in a certain way if you do not do that you are out of the society so that society concept that is the essence once you are born in a society in a culture the essence of the culture means the rules and regulations the principles set by the culture the society that is the essence existentialism is opposite to the essentialism existentialism say or existentialists they say that existence is more important than the essence existence is uh, completely different your existence is yours completely you are a complete individual you your life is yours you can live it in any way if if you are a boy and if you like to if you wish to have long hair you can have long hair so you cannot say long hair means uh, people will laugh at me will say he is a girl he is behaving like a girl no you will never think about what people will say whatever is uh, your wish or whatever uh, pleases you you may do that okay if you are going and you find somebody sitting and you want to uh, slap him you can do that okay there is no error there is no wrong but if you go by the essence that is wrong you cannot slap somebody without any reason but existentialism say that whatever comes to your mind as a human being you have a free mind you have completely free individualism so you can do anything you like okay so that is the major part so here you will find that coming to the cafe in the late night uh, you cannot say the old man is uh, a kind of uh, uh, um, very um, ignorant of um, uh, this enjoyment and pleasure he does not know how to enjoy okay so one who comes to the suppose uh, if you want to go to a hotel definitely a, a restaurant or to enjoy a um, dinner or a supper anything you must go in time so that is what essence says essence says you have to go in time essence says you have to sit like this 
essence says you have to order the waiter like this this is all essentialism but existentialism say if you are away from that essence you deny those essence and do something that your mind at that time at the particular point of time says you instructs you if you work by that that may be quite dissimilar to other people which is uh, means against the essence of the culture uh, against the rules of the cafe but still that is exist existentialism your existence is completely yours your mother your father who gave you the birth is not important you are just a product of their pleasure for for the sake of fun they uh, did something and out of that you are born so you are not a very selective chosen kind of a uh, child by your parents existential list believe you are just a product of biological uh, cross nothing else okay so um, uh, if your mother dies why should you lament for that why should you mourn over her death uh, uh, if you have read uh, uh, a stranger the stranger um, by albert camus uh, uh, the outsider uh, the translation is the outsider so if you have not read you read that book you can understand what existentialism is from that book there are many other texts also which uh, clearly say that existentialism is a very good concept which developed just after uh, the second world war towards the mid part of you know, the 20th century okay so here also we find that exist existentialist feature in this story Uh, we find contrast between these two waiters we'll discuss those contrasts later but the theme of the novel is nothingness okay nothingness the all powerful and engulfing uh, sense of nada okay that is a french word uh, which means um, uh, nothingness nothing especially in the old man's life okay the story reflects an, an autobiographical aspects of hemingway himself his life and his affinity with other existential writers like sartre and camus okay um, i talked about albert camus and one of his works the outsider the stranger written in french actually and later got translated into english with the title the outsider if you get a chance go through the text uh, it is a very beautiful text okay meso the main character does not cry does not mourn over her mother's death and people are very much surprised to see why he is not crying and he is asking why should i uh, mourn over the death okay so he does not um, he killed somebody he found somebody uh, on the beach he had a gun with him and uh, uh, he thought of killing and he killed he was put in jail so in a jail while he was uh, in the custody of the jail he did not feel anything like other jailers when his lover beloved goes to meet him uh, he has no curiosity to see her to share certain um, problems that he is facing in the jail he is, he did not um, uh, look at all her beloved so that is very peculiar absurd you can say you you find it is very unusual so that is existentialism so you go through the text so uh, we find hemingway having a good uh, rapport with uh, these uh, existential writers uh, the portraiture of an old man you will find this old man the portraiture of the old man is very uh, very important he is in despair okay the despair which exists beyond his plenty of money you may have money so money does not mean uh, money does not Uh, mean that you 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 are uh, enjoying the happiness if you have a lot of money so you must be happy uh, that is not uh, the general um, view so people may think you have money so you must not have any problem and that is why you must be happy so that may not be always true so we find here that this old man may have plenty of money but he is always in despair okay who likes to visit a clean well lighted cafe in night okay you if you concentrate on the title you will find a clean clean means 
which is not dirty that means the house i said the house of the old man is very lug means full of luxury a very uh, good well furnished a very um, uh, means costly house you can say how can it be dirty but the dirtiness is not found in the furniture or you can say in the um, uh, the look of the house the dirtiness is not found there the dirtiness is somewhere else in the mind the mind which perceives those things you cannot see uh, um, uh, this uh, with your physical eyes or uh, these things you cannot see with your eyes physical eyes you have to perceive it to see through your mind's eye if you use that you can see something very negligible something very dirty filthy exist in the house he wants to get rid of those things that is why he preferred the cafe okay well lighted well lighted means his house is full of darkness no that is not but if you uh, take it symbolically okay if you look at the house symbolically it is full of lights with a different uh, kind of uh, costly lights which uh, makes the house very bright but that is to your physical eyes but the real darkness can be visible can be shown by your mind side so this old man does not find his house to be well lighted he finds the cafe to be well lighted that is why he comes to um, um, comes to avoid darkness in his own house during the night in the day time he manages going here and there but during the night in order to avoid the darkness he comes to the cafe so this is very important um uh, you will find uh, I, i told about the contrasted characters these two waiters they they are posed in contrast to each other the old waiter and the young waiter they stand poles apart in terms of their temperament okay in terms of their perception understanding they stand poles apart they are very different the young waiter does not have any idea about the old man's needs outside money and material satisfaction he finds everything is there in money and material satisfaction material satisfaction means what the satisfaction that you get out of different materials you have ac you have a luxury car so you can enjoy that so that is called material satisfaction but here the old man is not running after material satisfaction he has um, he has experienced all kind of material satisfaction in his life now he is in search of something else that is something difficult to be understood by a young person like the young waiter the young wait- waiter is very immature to understand the actual problem the actual sorrow of this old man okay uh, for him these are nothing and absurd for no reason so this old man coming to the uh, cafe during very late in the night leaving his luxury house luxury uh, environment around his house his uh, comfortable uh, bed and everything uh, in his house is very uh, very luxury luxurious you can say so leaving those luxury he is coming to the cafe that is in the late night that is for nothing he he believes that the old man has gone mad for nothing he is coming here and um, this is completely absurd and there is no reason why he is coming and why he thought of committing suicide he has everything uh, some years left to uh, for uh, for his complete life uh, he will live for another 5 or 10 years so he can enjoy uh, all the luxury and die happily but instead of doing that he is coming in the midnight um, uh, you cannot understand means uh, the young mind which are immature uh, they cannot understand but the older waiter understands such needs and knows that these may drive people to kill themselves the older uh, waiter is a matured one okay with the increase of your age with accumulating a lot of experiences of life you will see that others cannot see the youngers cannot see okay the immature cannot see you can perceive certain things 
uh, which uh, which is difficult to see by the physical eyes so this older waiter is capable of understanding the actual sorrow actual problem of this old man the younger waiter is in a hurry to close the cafe and uh, is sarcastic and hostile when the old man asks for brandy for the second time he hurriedly said no the sub the cafe is closed now we cannot um, provide you with the brandy now so you can go home so he said directly and taking the advantage of the uh, uh, taking the advantage of the deafness okay the deafness of this old man he said many things to the uh, old man why are you calling here you must have died in your attempt of suicide he said many things okay he was also callous about the soldier and the girl who were moving uh, in the dead of night in the midnight they were moving uh, the soldier with a girl so he is also very callous about their uh, being out uh, in the uh, midnight okay wish to go home for his wife and um, denies that he may um, some day become old he denies that he is not going to old and he is not going to do police like this old man uh, okay and he is very much eager to go home and um, for his wife okay the older waiter can visualize uh, um, such terror of human existence and can identify with the old man's predicament he can connect with the actual predicament of this old man what is going on inside his uh, mind actually he is able to do that the older waiter he can visualize the terror of human existence so human existence is terrific at a certain time so you cannot say that everyone can enjoy okay situation will propel you in 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 such a way that you may have everything but you cannot enjoy anything so that is the nothingness we'll discuss the younger waiter betrays a sense of arrested awareness and his perceptions are restricted to nothing only he says there is nothing um, every every fault is by this old man there is no reason there is nothing why he comes here in the midnight why he is sorrowful why he tries to uh, commit suicide there is nothing there is no reason nothing okay his needs of and uh, their fulfillment with a wife and with a job with youth confidence and money so everything can be fulfilled according to the younger waiter so if you have a good wife if you have a good job if you have good uh, youth uh, um, confidence in the youth and if you have a lot of money so you have everything so that is the need nothing else but his concern is mis- myopic and constricted and self centered okay uh, you can say uh, uh, only with the immediate and transient and something personal so his concern is with something immediate whatever you need now something transient which is temporary something temporary so whatever you see the luxury the material satisfaction everything is temporary transitory transient and personal you talk about yourself your wife your job your money your family so you are uh, you are denying uh, the company of a old man who is very much helpless is in despair and cannot live cannot sleep um, uh, in a sound sleep in his own house in his um, luxury house he cannot sleep well he cannot sleep a peaceful um, sleep in his own house that is why he has come here instead of entertaining him instead of paying attention to him he is very much um, very much eager to go his own house he could not see that job implies loss of job wife implies loss of wife and youth implies age and con- confidence implies death death of confidence and money the loss of money so all these things they imply certain things Th- this waiter younger waiter is unable to understand job means you have to lose your job wife means wa- you have to lose your wife okay it may be quickly or late you are going to lose you cannot have your wife for for, for eternal uh, for the eternity so you have to lose 
youth implies age means youth is not permanent youth is also transient you will also become old with the um, uh, with, with gradual uh, time so time will make you old uh, at a certain time certain period confidence that confidence you are proud of your confidence now you are young that is why you are confident your confidence will also uh, die a time will come you will have no confidence money that we are happy that we have a lot of money so that money has no meaning at all uh, with uh, no connection with her peace of mind with her tranquility with her uh, solitude or with her bliss so it has no connection so you have a lot of money that does not imply you will be the most uh, um, the, the most kind of uh, the happiest person in the world that is not true so this is something beyond the understanding of this young water but in sharp contrast or in irony co contrast we find the older waiter is uh, very much conscious of all these um, atrophying and despairing implications that he reflects uh, uh, um, larger awareness you can say uh, and concern and empathy for this old uh, man okay so this consciousness concern and empathy for this old man is because of his maturity because of his understanding of the state for him the old man who has turned 80 is deaf unsteady bereft of a wife and is in despair beyond plenty okay so you cannot compare all these things with that plenty of money and uh, plenty of wealth you cannot compare these these are certain things you you cannot compare with money you cannot um, um, measure the price you cannot uh, reckon the price okay this is something your wife your um, your deafness okay your inability you can say okay uh, and uh, uh, the unsteady um, fit the unsteady uh, unsteady legs now he cannot walk steadily okay all these things all kind of despair they, they are beyond uh, the imagination of the value of money okay so that is something uh, understood by the old waiter the home of the old man traditionally a symbol of security and comfort and has turned a not home now home is traditionally a symbol of security and comfort so you when you are at home you find yourself secure secured from uh, the climates when it is very much uh, winter uh, it is uh, heavy winter and uh, snow is falling outside and you if you are inside the house so you feel secure okay so during an attack or during any kind of sudden many uh, during rain during extreme uh, sun uh, you find secure from all these natural calamities when you are uh, inside your home okay but this home is not a home for the old man now and he needs a clean and well lighted cafe as his home to stay as long as permitted he finds peace in this cafe okay we find the theme of nothingness is in the center the old the old waiter reflects at the end of the story okay the end of the story we find that it was a nothing that he knew too well it was a nothing that he knew too well. This is the line by the older waiter. It was a nothing that he knew too well. It was all a nothing and a man, a man was nothing too. Some lived it in it and never felt it, but he knew it was all nada. Okay. This old man lived in, in nothingness and has realized there is nothing in life so whatever you say mine whatever you say this is my house my wife my job my degrees whatever you say mine they are not actually yours there is nothing that you can say yours okay so you see the world in that sense you can understand there is nothing in the world so everything is very transient very temporary and uh, today you say this is mine tomorrow uh, that will be somebody else or that will be destroyed you cannot say this is mine anymore so how can you say how can be happy with 
this concept that I have so much of possessions, I have so much, so many uh, cars, so many bungalows, so many uh, properties. So all these belongs to nothing. They are nothing actually. Okay. This is the reality. This is the reality of life. One who understands this, find nothing in this kind of building. Uh, you have uh, very costly houses. You have costly cars. Okay. A very costly bed, which gives you all kind of comfort. You, if you understand this nothingness in everything, you cannot uh, find peace or you cannot find comfort anymore enjoying these material things. It's very, uh, very significant story. Go through the text, try to understand the concept. Uh, better you uh, become mature, the more you understand. The more you become mature, the understanding of this story will be more. So as you are not very much matured, so you, you may take time to understand. But those who have already got their maturity, they can understand better what exactly the author trying to say in this story. Okay, So this is uh, all about uh, the story. Um, we discussed uh, uh, the, uh, a clean, well-lighted uh, uh, story. Okay, uh, the, A clean, well-lighted place by Ernest Hemingway. So now coming to the next story, we we are at the end of the class, but still I, I will give uh, uh, something about the story. The Bear by Faulkner, William Faulkner. It was published in, uh, actually originally it was published in uh, the Harper magazine in 1935 with the title Lion. But later in 1942, it was published in Go Down Moses in this collection as the bear. The title was changed. It was expanded, modified. The story was expanded and a little bit modified. It's a very long story. OK, you cannot say a short story, but uh, a series of short stories you will find in this book. OK, yeah, though it is called a short story, but actually this is not actually short. You will five, uh, you will find five parts of the story. OK more than 100 pages so you uh, you can call it a novel but actually it is not named as novel uh, it is called a novelette okay uh, uh, it was published in uh, 1942 with this title the bear uh, in short i'll say uh, in short the summary is like that uh, isaac uh, Isaac McCaslin is a boy um, who is the last male descendant of um, Cortharus McCaslin, okay, Isaac's grandfather, who brought a large uh, parcel of land from um, uh, Chicasos and turned into a plantation. And he is he is um, managing the, that plantation uh, with the slaves, using slaves for many years. So this is the setting. And uh, this boy, Isaac, at the opening of the story, we find that he is uh, um, taking, attending the yearly hunting camp, on hunting party. And uh, there he is busy with the attempt of killing a very uh, bear, uh, very furious kind of ferocious uh, bear called Old Ben. Okay, he tried uh, along with the party, and he was being taught. He was being given training by Sam Father, another character. He was there for learning uh, how to shoot, how to hunt, and to be a woodsman from this uh, teacher Sam Father. You can say, and Sam Father. Um, this boy and others, Boone, uh, another character. So they all tried to kill the uh, old bear, uh, this, um, you can say, old Ben. They tried many ways. Many times uh, they tried, they failed, and uh, sometimes they thought that this bear is immortal. Okay. And uh, uh, some sometimes the hunting boys, uh, hunting dogs, they are also afraid of this um, uh, bear. So once they found a very furious dog, uh, they named it Lion. 
and they they thought that this dog uh, can attack and kill the uh, bear so they took the uh, dog and uh, uh, kept they uh, kept the dog with uh, with the custody of this bone and um, they went on uh, killing the went on their attempt to kill the bear anyhow there they uh, were able to kill but that was a long process uh, the dog and the bear they fought for a long hour a long time so when boon who was in uh, who was the caretaker of the uh, boon uh, hagan beck uh, the the full name is he uh, could not see the dog being defeated by the um, bear so when uh, the dog was um, means the, the dog was uh, uh, attacking and capturing the throat of the bear uh, this man boon hagan beck went and jumped into the onto the back of the bear and started stabbing uh, by the means the uh, the uh, bear was killed so later we find isaac uh, the story moves uh, certain years now and we find that isaac now is 20 years old and uh, he is not willing to accept the plantation the inherited plantation that that is his positions now after his grandfather he wants his cousin um mccaslin um, edmonds edmonds to take care of that and he does not want to uh, take care of the plantation he does not want to possess that plantation because of many reasons first one is the family history okay the family history is very uh, you will find incest and um miscegenation in the family history and uh, this is very uh, very critical uh, that uh, isaac does not like okay the grandfather uh, carothers mac mac caslin had relation with a slave girl okay unis the name of the girl was unis and had a daughter okay the daughter was tommy and again had relation with the daughter also tommy and had a son named tor okay so that is the incest incest kind of family history that that isaac knew well and uh, the slavery system is another reason so he does not want the slaves to be uh, under his control and they should work in the plantation so that is why he does not want to accept that plantation he forcibly gave away the plantation and the land whatever Uh, he has inherited from his grandfather to Edmond uh, Macaslin Edmonds. Okay, and uh, um, he became a carpenter. He had learned how to become a woodsman from Sam fathers, so he became now a, a carpenter. Okay, at the end of the story, we find Isaac becoming is a good woodsman now. He visit visit the old hunting camp. Uh, that um, uh, from where he got the training and there we find that um, the the land that particular land where they were practicing their hunting and everything has been uh, sold to a company okay and they are going to destroy systematically to that particular land and uh, for their own uh, plans and uh, programs they will do that so there there is no such hunting camps and no uh, land left so he visits sam and lions grave okay the graves uh, sam and lions who died just after they killed the bear um, uh, they to that grave he paid a visit and he paid his respect also and runs to boon boon hagan back who was now hunting squirrels at that time okay he was hunting squirrels when Uh, this Isaac reached that place. Boone shouts that Isaac should leave the squirrels as they belongs to him. He did not means Isaac did not intention to haunt the squirrels, but he thought on his way. Understanding the uh, original uh, intention of this boy, of this man, he said he should not 
uh, touch my squirrels you you should not come to this area this is mine the ending of the story is a comment on the way human carelessly destroy the they worship the worship the worship of it may be land animals or each other so whatever may be worshiped at a time okay they they look at them uh, like that now uh, in the world option everything is going to be destroyed and there is nothing so this is a novel written in a five parts in the novel it is called that is why novel and uh, you'll find themes like men versus nature okay uh, means men how encounters with nature and now what is the condition of both okay land ownership how uh, this was a situation in which people the human make they are very interested to acquire lands the more of uh, lands and uh, another important part is the on result racial tensions okay from slavery okay coming from slavery system and the civil war so you must you have already heard about civil war how uh, what was the reason behind civil war american civil war and uh, all these things so uh, this was the uh, theme of on reserved racial tension related to the race of negroes the high and low caste the slavery system all these things have been discussed so uh, this is uh, all about uh, you can say uh, this story we do not have enough so we cannot discuss more Okay. so we have to stop now if you have anybody have any question you can ask Okay, thank you.